Hello and welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair Explore Session. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We hope that you're really excited to get to learn about some great schools. We have a few housekeeping announcements as we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can leave a question for all of the representatives to answer about their institutions or you can direct your questions to specific schools by including their names in your, with your question. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions that have been happening, so we hope that you'll be joining us next for our College Fair programming. This presentation and all of the presentations are being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash BACS. This is the same website where you're able to, um, where you signed up and where you're able to um, sign up for more. We have a great variety of schools that are gonna be presenting to you today that vary in size, location, and other characteristics. We hope that this session broadens your horizons during the college search. And now we're going to see which schools we're gonna be learning from today. These are our six schools. We're going to be learning from Santa Clara University, the University of Rochester, Willamette University, Harvey Mudd College, Bentley University, and Colorado College. I'm really excited to welcome our first school to kick us off, and I'll be turning it over to Michaela at Santa Clara University. All right, thank you so much, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Very excited to share with you a little bit about Santa Clara University. As Jennifer mentioned, my name is Michaela Alstrom. I am an assistant director of undergraduate admission at Santa Clara. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. We have a few minutes here, so I'm gonna just launch right in um, and share some of the key details of what makes SCU unique. We really believe there are three things that make us unique, our location, our Jesuit philosophy, and our size. So starting with the location, we are located on the west coast of the United States in um, California. We're about an hour south of San Francisco, really close to the slopes in Tahoe, only about a half day trip, half an hour away from the uh, beaches in Santa Cruz. So wonderful location in terms of just things to do, ways to get outdoors uh, and enjoy the beautiful weather right around 70 degrees year round um, and, and low humidity, which I think is something that we really enjoy um, a lot of ways for students to be outside. At SCU, we have students represented from 38 different countries and 49 different states. So only about half of our students are from outside of uh, California. So it's a, it's a good mix of the two. Our location is also really unique because we are in the heart of the Silicon Valley. And because of our location, we're really good at getting students connected to what they want to do. About 80% of our undergrads end up taking on internships before they graduate. So getting some of that really essential skill that so many employers are looking for. You'll see we have a strong return on investment with about 86% of our students employ full-time in grad school or a service program within six months of graduating. Strong salaries for students, even just right after they graduate. And then you'll see some of our top employers there on the left bottom side of the screen, uh, which is good to highlight. But one thing I love about SEU students is you will find them in so many different areas by the time they finish their degrees. The next two things that make SCU really unique are that we are a Jesuit university. That means the university is Catholic. However, you do not need to be Catholic to attend SCU. The main ways this will come out for you in your education will be in this emphasis on educating the whole person, mind, body, and spirit, and also an emphasis on service, right? So really great opportunities for students to engage in that way. We are a mid-sized university, just about 5,500 undergraduate students with an 11 to one student to faculty ratio and just about 23 students to a class. So this is a really important point to highlight. Here you're gonna have so much opportunity to really get to know your professors, build relationship with them, uh, really pick their brains and try to understand um, all the skills and all of the knowledge that they bring into the classroom. It also means there's a lot of opportunity to get support from professors and peers alike. 
you'll notice that we have a 95% retention rate. So that means that of the first year students who come to SCU, 95% return for more the next year. And then we also have an 88% four year graduation rate. So really helping our students finish those degrees on time. And many of our students actually finish with multiple uh, majors and additional minors. Okay, a little bit about our application process. So when you apply to Santa Clara University, you apply to one of our three colleges. You have the College of Arts and Sciences, which is 55% of our undergrad population, top programs in bio, communications, um, economics, computer science, so really strong program there. A School of Engineering is 18% of our undergrads. There you're also gonna see about eight different majors, including a really fantastic new aerospace minor. We have a brand new STEM facility that has just been built. It is going to be incredible. So please do check that out on our website. You can kind of see a time lapse of that getting built over the last couple of years. And we uh, aim to open that in the fall. Levy School of Business is 27% of our undergrad population, also about seven different majors. Uh, we offer the four plus one program in the School of Business and the School of Engineering. That's a bachelor's and master's degree in five years. Uh, and then we also have what are called professors of practice in the Levy School of Business. So these are professors who've actually worked in the industry. They're great at getting you connected uh, with, with people in the industry themselves. In terms of when you apply to SCU, you will want to apply to one of these three schools through the common application. Uh, it's very important that you pay attention to which school you're applying to. There are going to be slightly different things that we look for for each school. You'll see the average GPA there on the left side of the screen. That is an unweighted GPA on a 4.0 scale. Uh, we do not weight the GPA, but we will be looking at course rigor. So we are interested to see if you took advantage of AP, IB, honors, dual enrollment, anything related to that, showing that you really took on some, some rigor in your high school career. But we do look at this holistic review, so the academic side along with the personal side. So make sure uh, that you really showcase what you've been doing in your high school time period um, in that in those uh, those personal um, narratives that you have the opportunity to share with us. We are test optional at least for the next year. Uh, so for those of you applying soon, um, you are welcome to send us your scores, but again, it is completely optional. You'll see there that we also have our deadlines listed. So the first deadline being November 1, early action and early decision one. Early decision again is that binding agreement. Uh, and then you'll also see the January 7, that's gonna be a regular decision. Final slide, here's a way for you to kind of get to know us a little bit better. You can find your counselor through that link or join us in any one of these social media channels. Thanks so much, everyone. I'm gonna hand it back off. Thank you so much, Michaela, for sharing Santa Clara with everyone tonight. Our next school it, that's up is going to be the University of Rochester. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my name is Kim Craig. I am the West Coast. Oh, uh, hold on just a second. You all don't need to see my email. Um, let's see if I can make um, this work. Um, I am the West Coast Regional Director, and I do um, live in California, um, although I'm from Rochester uh, originally, which is nice. Oh, is it working this time? It looks like it is. Um, so yeah, this is where we are. Really. Like, what's that? Looks good. We are oh, seeing okay. right. right? Um, perfect. <laughs> so, um, guys, this is the Zoom world um, we're living in these days. But um, I wanted to introduce you to where we are first. So we are located in New York State. We are in Rochester, New York, which is, um, of course, separate from New York City. It's a city of about a million people um, in western New York, located on the traditional homelands of the Haudenosaunee people, uh, right below Lake Ontario. So you can see a little bit about what um, campus looks like here. We like to think that we really kind of have the best of both worlds in some ways. You'll hear that a lot in admissions um, speeches, but um, in this case, we mean that we have a real campus feel. So we have a true East Coast college campus feel. We're in a bend in the river, um, green space, brick buildings. Um, you know, we always get um, lots of great compliments on how beautiful our campus is. Um, but we are only two miles south of downtown Rochester, which I mentioned is a city about a million people, great internships, restaurants, concerts, um, all that kind of thing. We have a great shuttle service that's going to get you all around to there. Um, 
this is inside campus. Our clouds are not always that dramatic, but you can see it's a pretty uh, nice campus. But the thing that really sets us apart, I think, is our curriculum. So we have no courses. Um, we um, have an open or flexible curriculum uh, by design. We want to make sure that you can study what you love. Um, we want you to have the opportunity to explore as much as you want. Um, when you're, you're admitted to all majors except for music performance, we do have a world-class conservatory uh, that is open to non-majors. So if you are a musician, vocalist, if you want to continue to um, take lessons, to spin ensembles and performances, you can absolutely do that as a non-major. Um, but to be a major, you do uh, have to audition. So um, other than that, though, admitted to everything, you can move around as much as you want. Um, and because of this, I think we have a really strong interdisciplinary focus. You know, so when I say you can switch majors, I know students sometimes I pick on pre-med because they um, think, well, I'm definitely not going to change from biology to dance, um, you know, which you probably won't, but um, you might change to bioethics, right, um, or health, um, or studying things like that, and that's the perspective we want you to have, so we want to give them to try that. Um, about half of our students double major. Um, we have students who triple and quadruple major. You can see our um, triple major here. I don't recommend that, but um, you can do it, um, and if you wanted to do that but didn't want to go that um, triple major route. Um, we also have a program week five where you can stay for a fifth year, study something that's not your major, and it's completely tuition free. We're the only school I've ever heard of that does that. So we're really putting our resources behind that idea that we want you to take advantage and explore and see what you like. Um, similarly, we want you to get that hands-on learning. We want you to do research. We want you to do internships. Almost 80% of our students do research. Um, about 95% of our students do internships. Um, we want you to do that. You can start researching in internships freshman year. You do it every year you're at Rochester. Because of our flexible curriculum, you can do them as part of study abroad. We have students researching climate change in Antarctica. I'm working with the UN abroad, um, engineers about borders, things like that. Um, if you tell us you're excited about research application, you can get a $3,000 grant to do research while you're at Rochester and anything you want. So um, we are pretty unique in being a tier one research university, but only having about 5,500 students. Um, so that's why you see that 10 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, you know, classes are small. They're um, more seminar style. You're able to have that, but then have the resources of this big university. Um, most of our students live on campus all four years. As you can see, we're division three. We have tons of different um, clubs and organizations. We do a lot to really create a global campus for you. Um, we have, um, this year we have over 120 countries represented. Um, the last few years it's been over 140. So, um, you know, we're really trying to make sure that you have that global perspective. And um, so now the application and um, paying for it and all that. Um, we are of course very holistic. We have early decision and regular decision. Um, we are test optional and we've been test optional since before um, COVID and testing closures and things like that. Um, we are very focused though on connecting with us virtually or not. We love interviews are highly recommended. I do lots of interviews around the Bay Area and virtually. Um, so, um, you know, feel free to use my contact information here. Um, know that we, meet 100% of demonstrated need and we do give up to like full ride scholarships. Um, the only thing you have to do to apply for scholarships is apply diversity. We're really committed to making that work for families. So please feel free to keep in touch with me. I love uh, connecting with students. Um, like I said, I am here on this time zone. And so I want to let you know of the different opportunities we'll have virtually um, and, you know, maybe in person in the future, but um, know that we are here to help if you need anything. And I think I came in under my six um, minutes, so I will let you all go, but hopefully um, you'll connect with me soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for presenting on the University of Rochester. All right, we're on to school number three tonight, and we're going to be learning more about Willamette University. Caitlin? Awesome. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Willamette University. My name is Caitlin Forbes, and I'm an admission counselor here at Willamette. Um, I'd like to take the next six minutes or so to tell you a little bit about Willamette's story and introduce you to just a few things that make us unique. Um, my hope is that in these few minutes, I will inspire you to want to spend more time with us uh, through a more in-depth virtual or in-person visit. 
Um, just for some context, Willamette is located in Salem, Oregon, uh, the state capital in the heart of the really beautiful Willamette Valley. We're a liberal arts college supported by graduate programs in business law and theology, and we're located in part of the country that is just sought after for its really beautiful um, nature and just natural elements, uh, its diverse ecosystems, outdoor opportunities, and just so many places to explore. Uh, Willamette is also uh, one of the most historic universities in the West uh, of the United States, and it was founded actually before Oregon was established as a state itself. Uh, we began to innovate, or we began to educate, innovate leaders uh, right from the beginning, including our very first graduate, Emily York, who's in this picture right here. As things like business, government, education, medicine, and uh, social systems were beginning to be established in the American West, uh, it was Willamette alum who were equipped with these uh, amazing educational tools that allowed them to make an impact as these industries quite literally grew up around us. I mention our history because it's really important to understand our rich heritage in order to understand where we are as an institution currently present day. Our legacy is one of leadership and it impacts our community um, and what current Willamette students will find on campus. Uh, we're just a place that takes knowledge and likes to turn it into action. Our predecessors did give us a motto that informs uh, the current Willamette experience in a very real way. Uh, the motto that was established at our founding is not onto ourselves, alone are we born. And it sums up what those early alumni knew from their time at Willamette, which is we're in the world together and our education should be a time where we practice uh, and explore how we have an impact on others. We talk about the motto quite a bit and uh, we always challenge ourselves to live it in new and varied ways as well. I think that we do a really exceptional job providing students with occasions both in and out of the classroom to practice this idea of the motto. You'll find students making a positive change throughout the Salem community through leadership, service, and innovation. Also in the classroom, Willamette students do meet in small groups where highly engaged faculty lead primarily discussion-based courses. These small groups are interactive and designed to help students develop important skills that will see them through their lives and their careers, like critical thinking and creative problem solving and the ability to consider uh, varied perspectives. Our faculty are also uh, really accomplished academics. They're continuously researching and writing and publishing, but they're always gonna be first and foremost educators and teachers. Um, the Willamette faculty serve as mentors who really help our students learn to learn uh, so they can grow and change the world around them as the world changes around them. Uh, so it's no wonder why Willamette has more Oregon Professors of the Year than any other college in the state by a really big margin. We feel strongly that the incredible classroom environment at Willamette is critically supported by experiential and co-curricular activities. So things like study abroad, hands-on research, and internships. Um, are the interactive out of class experiences that all Willamette students participate in. Also our unique location contributes significantly to our ability to provide these opportunities. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about where we're located. We're an urban campus uh, set in the center of Salem's downtown and we're the only campus in the nation that sits directly across from the state capitol, which is just 76 feet away. Um, you can see students doing everything from participating in research and internship opportunities to working in politics and economics and psychology, uh, as well as data science, just because we're uh, in a close proximity and have a long-term relationship with the uh, state government, which is really amazing and provides so many unique opportunities. Uh, we're also just uh, sandwiched on the other side of us is the Salem Health Hospital, uh, which is one of Oregon's largest providers. Um, our pre-med program is supported by um, our proximity to the Salem Health Hospital greatly, uh, which is also amazing if you want to have hands-on opportunities regarding uh, working in a health uh, setting. We also do own a 305 acre property uh, called the Xena Learning Laboratory where students can quite literally dig in the dirt, um, restoring habitats, participating in forestry studies, and also growing vegetables. And then finally, what sets us apart is our co-location with the Tokyo International University of America. Uh, through the American Studies program, we bring about 100 or so Japanese students to live and learn with us in Salem each year. And this program is a wonderful way to um, just add more folks to the Willamette community and just continue our strong commitment to uh, learning more about uh, international education. We value the experiential learning that comes from our exchange students who share our campus, as well as the other amazing opportunities that students find while participating in our 66 study abroad programs. 
So overall, as you can see, Willamette is physically located in a way that we are literally supported by opportunities for our students to extend their learning beyond campus. Uh, there's a lot more to say, but my time is almost up. So I just wanted to mention that we use the common application, we review applications holistically, and we've been fully test optional for several years. Uh, we will never charge a fee to apply because we don't want that to be a barrier for any student who's interested in attending Willamette. And every applicant, inc including my friend here, uh, is considered for our generous financial aid awards. Um, we encourage applications from bright, diverse, prepared students who want to make an impact um, with challenging ideas and interact with the world around them. So if you want to be a part of the deep traditions and history that have made Willamette the shaper of innovative leaders, I hope that you'll take the time to learn more about us. You can visit our website or to explore our extensive virtual visit opportunities or in-person opportunities, as well as our current um, other uh, curriculum that we're offering, uh, or just don't hesitate to reach out to our office directly to learn more. Go Bearcats! Thank you so much, Caitlin, for sharing Willamette with us tonight. All right, we've learned and heard about three great schools and we have three more to go. I just wanna remind all of our attendees that we have the Q&A button and you can just Hit that button and drop a question in for all of our representatives or one to a specific school and just include the name of the school and the question so the representative will know. Uh, but we are really hoping that you'll ask some great questions because our admissions reps are here to um, share and help personalize it for you as well. All right, so our next school, as you can see, we're going to be hearing about Harvey Mudd College. Jason? All right. Is the PowerPoint up? I think it's up. Yes, it All is up. and we can hear you, so all good to go. Awesome. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Santiago. I'm going to be talking about Harvey Mudd, uh, Harvey Mudd College today. We're located in Claremont, California, which is about 35 miles east of Los Angeles. We're also a member of the Claremont Colleges, which I'll talk about more um, in a little bit. But first, uh, about Harvey Mudd. So we're a small liberal arts college focused on science, engineering, and math which means you know, we definitely focus and, and want to promote that well-rounded education, but we also only offer 10 majors total, all in STEM. And you can see here, this is the college's mission. Uh, we were founded in 1955, right in the middle of the space race, space race, so strong emphasis on STEM during that time. And you may be wondering, how does a STEM-focused liberal arts college work exactly? Um, well, like other liberal arts colleges, students come in undeclared. Uh, and you have two years to choose your major. But during that time, as you can see here by the slide for three semesters, uh, we require a technical core. So every student has to take at least one class um, in every sort of discipline, um, every department at the college. Uh, so we want them to be well-versed across STEM. So you have to take the class in biology, chemistry, computer science, engineering, math, and physics. Um, even when you enter your major, the idea of breadth really still follows through. So not only do we want you to be well-versed across the STEM disciplines, we also want you to understand that your, your major, your specific major also has a lot to offer. So it's really best illustrated by our engineering major, which as you can see, we offer one. We offer just one engineering major. It's a general engineering program. So while you know on the internet, you can find this ranking pretty highly in mechanical engineering and electrical engineering, computer engineering, and even civil engineering. We don't actually offer those majors. Um, we just want we just prepare our engineering majors broadly so that they are prepared for, for whatever subdiscipline they want to pursue later on. And that's true for any of the majors that you see here. Every major is, is approached sort of in that in that broad way in which you're going to learn across your major, but you'll also get to specialize. And more on that in a little bit. Um, Students also, oh, I guess it's now. Uh, students will get to specialize. Uh, that's usually a question after I talk about broad majors. Um, and you do so through the electives that you choose within your specific majors, whether they belong to the department that you've decided to study or not. But it's also through research. So we wanna make sure that you have that hands-on research experience so that you're ready to go into work, or you're ready to go into grad school after graduating. Research can start as early as your first year because we're strictly undergraduate. And every student is required to complete a capstone program in order to sort of leave. Um, you'll either choose between a senior thesis or clinic, and clinic is something we're very well known for. Um, it's where uh, year-long projects are supported by sponsors that you can see sort of listed in the middle of that page. So companies like Google, Nike, Virgin Orbit, et cetera. We have about 10 to 15 pens coming out of these 
these projects each year. Um, and it's a great networking opportunity while you are still an undergraduate at the college. Last but not least, uh, every student also has to take about 25% of their courses in the humanities, social sciences, and the arts, what we call on campus um, as HSA. Uh, you are required to complete, as you can see, another breadth <laughs> requirement um, in the humanities, social sciences, and arts, but also a concentration. So four more classes that sort of build to a specific theme or discipline. Um, it's like a minor, but not technically a minor. Uh, we get that uh, question a lot because students want to major in STEM and then minor in a non-STEM discipline, potentially. We don't award a traditional minor, so you can concentrate on something. Uh, we just won't call it specifically uh, a minor. And, you know, all of this uh, really builds to the idea that we want to make sure that the future STEM leaders that we educate at Harvey Mudd are also you know, well-rounded so that they can be excellent communicators who understand the impact of their work on society, which harkens back to the college mission. And in supporting us in, in this mission are the other Claremont Colleges. So when you think about Harvey Mudd, it's not just Harvey Mudd on its own, it's also the Claremont Colleges. So Pomona, Scripps, Claremont, McKenna, and Pitzer. We were founded as a consortium and are located in this square mile, as you can see here. We share the border with Scripps. We're right across the street from Scripps or we share a border with Pitzer right across the street from Scripps and our short five minute walk away from Claremont McKenna, CMC and Pomona. Uh, we share the same academic calendar, the same registration system. So cross registration happens seamlessly for the more than 2,500 courses that are offered annually. Uh, this gives our access, our students access to like a wealth of programs that we just couldn't support our, on our own, like two music programs, about a dozen world languages and so much more. We're often asked how often students take classes at the other colleges. 100% of our students take classes um, at the other colleges, many times out of need because we don't offer those classes specifically at Harvey Mudd College. Um, the student experience, the student life experience is also shared and many and, the, and, and so are the many resources, resources that we offer to support them. So as you can see there, um, I think the, the most fun of the things that we share is sort of varsity athletics. Uh, there are two Division Three athletic programs in the Claremont Colleges. Claremont McKenna, Harvey Mudd, and Scripps form one, and then Pomona and Pitzer are a rival. So for the big homecoming game, they literally cross the street. It's the Sixth Street rivalry because that's what separates um, the southern end of Claremont McKenna and, and Pomona, the sort of that corner right there that joins the two of them. Um, and so it's it's really great because we are we work really well for students looking for a small college but can appreciate the possibility or the option for something bigger. We're also really great for students wanting to focus on STEM but don't want to lose out on that well-rounded education. Um, we are going to continue to be test optional in this next year. And even though we're not sure yet what visits will look like this summer, um, please check out our website right here, admission.hmc.edu. Uh, it's the quickest way to get on our inquiry list so that um, should we open up visits for the summer, uh, you'll be the first to know. Um, and I think that's it for me. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Jason, so much for presenting on Harvey Mudd. All right, we are going to be hearing from our next school, which will be Bentley University. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am frozen on my screen. Am I frozen on yours, Jennifer? You are frozen. Oh, what about you now? just moved. Okay. But I can I'm... hear you perfectly the entire time. So the sound Great. was never affected. Okay. So if that happens again, my apologies, but I'm glad you can still hear me. Um, I apologize. I am working on some, now you see everything that you don't need to be seeing. Hold on one second. Um, Elizabeth, if anything does change with either the screen share or your sound or anything, I'll just pop in and let you know, um, just okay. so I'll help you keep, keep, keep track of all that good stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Elizabeth Zeck, and I work at Bentley University, which is located about nine miles from Boston. Um, so I am on the east coast of the United States, so very far away from California. Um, and yes, I am not or no, I am not based in California. So I am currently on east coast time, but very excited to be here with you all tonight. So thank you for bearing with me with my tip technical difficulties. But first, something that's really different about Bentley is our location. So I definitely want to chat through what that looks like um, for our students before I jump into some more factual information. Um, so you can see here on the screen a little bit of our campus, which is um, this big building with the clock tower is our library. Um, if you look in the distance past that, you will see Boston. So Boston, Massachusetts is uh, a really big part of our community on campus. Um, 
Although our students are not in the heart of the city for everyday classes, they oftentimes spend time in the city for internship opportunities or just for personal fun, um, going to a Red Sox game and so on and so forth. So being near Boston, but not necessarily in the city is a really great best of both worlds situation for our students. So they really enjoy being on their quiet or suburban campus, but having access to Boston, which is the larger city in the area, is really important to them when, when kind of choosing this college process, but also once they're here for their four years, the opportunities through internships are really endless being so close to Boston. A few quick facts for you, um, but first I want to, you can read them on the screen right now, but first I want to talk a little bit about what makes Bentley unique? Um, because Bentley is not a small liberal arts institution and we are also not a large state school. So what is or who are or who are we as Bentley University is something that I certainly want to spend some time on. Now Bentley is a very focused institution on business. So no, we are not a liberal arts institution, but we do have a business program that is um, backed by liberal arts experiences. So our students at Bentley will take um, a full business core curriculum and a full liberal arts core curriculum. Um, so we do really focus on that business education with the liberal arts kind of at that secondary section of your education. Regardless of a student's major, even if they are an English major, you will still have to take all of those business core core classes because business is really the foundation of our education at Bentley. So that is a little bit how we are different and not necessarily specifically a larger state school or a small liberal arts institution. Now to get into some quick facts for you, we do have just around 4,000 undergraduate students on campus. There is an opportunity for graduate studies um, and we do have a number of graduate students on campus, just around 1,000. We have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio and a 26 average class size, student average class size. So a pretty small um, close knit community on campus and we are a very residential institution. So a lot of our students are living on campus um, if not really close by in the surrounding areas. Like I mentioned before, um, we are really focused on the business sector of education and what that looks like for students who are interested in business. There are 36 different majors and 30, sorry, 26 different majors and 35 minors for students to choose from. Something pretty unique about the admission process, which I'll get into in more detail later, but is that all of our students come into Bentley completely undecided. So we're really giving the first two years for our students to take that business core curriculum and really figure out what part of business they want to study. We do offer something that is called a liberal studies major, which allows students to pair their business major with a liberal studies concentration. While we do not allow our students to double major in the traditional sense, this will allow them to study something else besides just their typical major. And um, pretty something that's pretty cool about our campus is that we do have six high tech learning labs for our students to use and most popular is our trading room on campus, which is the oldest and the largest university trading room um, in the country. So we are really proud as a smaller business school to have that on campus. A little bit to touch on campus life. We do have about 20% of our student body involved in Greek life on campus. Um, and we do have just over 20 division one and division two sports. Um, so our men's hockey team is the only division one sport on campus. So we are primarily a division two institution. And then we have over 100 clubs um, and student organizations on campus. I honestly took this page right from our view book because it is really important way to show a lot of our outcomes. And I think that because business is the forefront of our education, internships and job placement is something that our families are constantly asking about. And so I wanted to provide this information for you all to show you how successful our students are coming out of Bentley's education, specifically in the business sector. So our students do have a 98% placement rate for the class of 2020, which I think is something really impressive to think about, especially considering that we were just in a, well, we still are in a global pandemic. Um, so our students are really able to utilize their education even in a tough year that we have as of this year. 
To quickly go through the application requirements, um, we are a Common App exclusive school, which means that is the only application that a student needs to fill out. We do require the high school transcript and letters of recommendation. Um, this past academic or application cycle and the next application cycle, we are test optional. And, um, but we also do have an option for interviews if students are interested in that as well. I know that I am just at my mark right now, but I wanted to provide my email address in case anyone has any questions related to Bentley. Um, I know it's a school that is a little bit further away. So if you do have any questions and want to chat further, please do not hesitate to reach out. I am the territory manager for Northern California, so I will be able to assist in anything I can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing Bentley with everyone today. All right, we're on to our sixth school. We're gonna be hearing from Colorado College. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, bear with me, the last one. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Pedro Ramirez. I'm the Associate Director for Outreach and Access at Colorado College. Pleasure to be with you. Um, no surprise, Colorado College is located in beautiful Colorado, uh, the Swiss or the Switzerland of the United States, as many people call it. Uh, we're a National Liberal Arts College, uh, the only nationally ranked liberal arts college in the Rocky Mountain time zone. So uh, place is very important to us, and we'll talk about that right now because we are in beautiful Colorado Springs, uh, which is about 45 minutes to, depending on what part of Colorado Springs and Denver you're going to, but about an hour south of Denver, Colorado. We are located on native land. So we do acknowledge the Ute uh, and indigenous Arapaho nations that uh, used to live and call this land their home. And we recognize that as we uh, stand on unceded territory of those people. Um, in terms of uh, our locations, we're not just one college, uh, in the city of Colorado Springs. We were just less than a half a mile from downtown Colorado Springs, but we have two other satellite campuses in Colorado. Uh, we have a CC cabin in, in Divide, Colorado, about 45 minutes away. And we have a whole Baca campus, which is essentially a satellite campus in this beautiful San Luis Valley of uh, Southwestern Colorado. Um, in terms of who we are, our students come from all over. Uh, we have students from all 50 states across the country, pretty evenly distributed across the country as well um, in about seven different countries around the world. Uh, last year, 31% of our students identified as students of color, 13% um, were first generation, and about 10% of our student body are international students. Um, at CC, we have a 96% uh, retention rate um, from freshman to sophomore year. Students are very happy um, and a, about a 95% uh, uh, four-year graduation rate. Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one with about 16 students per class. Um, we only have a student body of about 2,800 total students and 94% of our professors have terminal degrees in their areas of study. Uh, we have 80 ma majors and minors or some of our popular ones are Southwest Studies, Organismal Biology, as well as creative writing and the arts, theater, music, and dance. Um, but if you don't remember anything I talk about over the next uh, three minutes or two minutes I have left with you, uh, remember this, the block plan. The block plan is what makes CC different, unique, and very special. We are one of only two schools in the United States that actually teach you one class at a time. Uh, we think that going away from your traditional three to four classes a semester is um, not as beneficial to you as say learning just um, uh, in, in, uh, um, intently one class at a time. So each class at CC is three and a half weeks. You're in class every day for three and a half weeks uh, for about three hours a day uh, where you can just focus on that one subject. But it also allows you to do other things like study abroad, uh, do field study out, out in Colorado or around the country. So 80% of our students will actually do some type of field study, field research over their four years on the block plan and 100% of our students at Colorado College actually study abroad. Um, so it's pretty incredible how uh, much we are able to have you see the world. And so um, what makes, I mean, CC also very unique is our block breaks. So between each block, between each class you have at Colorado College, you get a four and a half day block break uh, where you get to be a citizen of the Southwest. We consider ourselves the gateway to the Southwest so you can be uh, a citizen of Colorado, enjoy the beautiful Rocky Mountains. We're about three hours from Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain National Park, and we're about four hours from Arches National Park as well, and, and, and uh, Western, Eastern Utah. Um, but in terms of uh, uh, admission, I'm gonna go just jump ahead to our, my presentation here. And the admission process, um, we are uh, what we would call 
um, a school of many rounds. So we have four decision plans in which you can apply. Um, we have early decision one, early decision two, which are binding. We also have early action, which you apply in November, or you can apply in regular action. We are very uh, transparent about our acceptance rate as we look at decision round. We are also test optional at CC. We have been test optional for going on our third year and we'll continue to be so um, for, the, for the foreseeable future. So uh, we really believe in the test being a, a choice, a student choice for you and putting your best foot forward in our application process. We take three different applications at Colorado College. We take most common is the Common App. We also take the QuestBridge application. And then we also take the Coalition application. Uh, applying to Colorado College is free. Uh, there is no app fee to apply to CC. Um, with that, I know it's been six colleges you've heard from, so I think that ends my uh, time and we'll jump to our Q&A section. Awesome, thank you so much, Pedro, for presenting on Colorado College tonight. All right, so we have reached the end of our six by six portion, and I wanna make sure that we have a couple minutes before we wrap up for um, all of our attendees to think if they have any other questions that they would like to put in the Q&A. And for any of our representatives that wanna share information in the chat for follow-up that um, our attendees can also grab that. So while we're doing that, I do have a live Q&A question for everybody. We're gonna go in the exact same order that we presented. So we'll be starting with Santa Clara and working our way one through six. As the representative ahead of you finishes, feel free to just turn on your microphone and answer the question. I won't call on you each one as we go. So a little more free flowing than before. So I'd love to hear from each of you about a favorite event, tradition, or program on campus that will help give our attendees a little more insight into um, your student experience. It could be academic, career, student life, um, or just a cherished tradition. So we are going to start with, uh, Michaela's gonna kick us off for Santa Clara, thank you. Um, yeah, great question, Jennifer. So I think, you know, it's tied. I have two that are tied for first place. So I'll try to make it uh, brief. But one is a big basketball game. We are an NCAA Division I university and we play a Gonzaga every year in basketball. They are incredibly good at basketball. So we definitely have a hard time winning. But we have such a good time as a community coming out to support the Broncos. So that's one big tradition. And then the other is an open mic night put on by our Black Student Union every quarter actually called Love Jones. It is so much fun. Anyone can jump up there on the mic um, and you see some really amazing uh, performances every single time. I'm gonna pass it off to the next school. Hey, um, I guess I would say um, in terms of an academic program, I'll just mention again, I know I mentioned in my presentation, but I truly love Take Five. Um, it's so cool to stay for a free fifth year. You can also do a free entrepreneurial year um, and students just do such cool projects. Um, it's really a great opportunity to take that extra time and just you know study things you love. Um, and in terms of a, a sort of a tradition, we do have um, puppy study breaks, guys. Uh, we work with some local charities and do some really fun um, puppy study breaks. So that's always my favorite thing to participate in. Um, and I will pass it over up to Full Annette. Thank you. Um, I love to talk about our midnight breakfast. It happens once each semester. It's before finals uh, kick off. And uh, what's great is it's free breakfast food starting from like 8 p.m. to midnight. Uh, and it's served by our faculty, staff, and administration. So you could say hi to our president of the university as he serves you pancakes and eggs, uh, which is great. They're themed. Last year, I believe, was Monsters University, uh, which is great. They're free prizes. It's just a great time. The library serves uh, cookies, and they have coloring and de-stress activities. So it happens once each semester. And it's just a great way to kick off a final season. So I love that tradition. And for Harvey Mudd, uh, we have a student run honor code. And one of the first things that students do with like a quill pen and everything is to sign this ginormous book um, to essentially say, you know, they'll try to do their best <laughs> um, as young people. Uh, and it's it's been going on for a really long time now. And I think we, we now have a few different books, though. I, I don't think we're supposed to tell students that, that it's not just the same book through 60 years. Um, but it's a it's a fun tradition that has continued on to today, and, and we're hoping that this next fall uh, that we'll be able to have students on campus to to sign to sign them all into the the honor code as well. At Bentley, um, one of my favorite traditions is our bingo nights. Um, so they are very popular amongst our community, our staff, and well 
our students, but also our staff and faculty. Um, the students always mention that you can win really cool prizes and it's very competitive because it's all students playing bingo against each other. Um, so really cool time to bring the community together. Obviously this year we did not have it, but in the past years, it's always something that the students talk about all the time on tour and something that I have really seen to be a cool aspect as well. Ooh, this one is really tough, but I would have to say at Colorado College, my favorite tradition is something called a dance workshop. We do it twice a year. Um, it's an amazing uh, just community event where any student, no matter what level or what um, comfortability you even have with dance, uh, kind of puts on their own dance for the whole entire campus to see. Um, and you would be surprised who steps up and, and joins dance workshop. And it's just great to see the whole campus come together. We hold it twice a year in our biggest theater on campus, the Catherine Mormon Theater. Um, and it's just a really fun event, a lot of support, a lot of positivity. Um, and it's just a time where the whole campus gets really excited to see their friends and community on stage dancing and having a good time and expressing themselves through cultural dance uh, and all, di all different types of dances uh, that you can even think of. So it's pretty cool. I love this question because it just, you get such a range of amazing answers and awesome opportunities. And I hope that the attendees are thinking, oh my gosh, that sounds really cool. I want to go look up that event or check it out on social media, look at past year's information. Maybe think to yourself, could I see myself on campus as a part of this, um, of this tradition or this event, this program, this activity, or you know, taking, taking a leap up there and hopping up there for open mic night or dance workshop. So um, I love this so much. Um, well, we have reached the end of our time together. I wish I could ask a million more questions, um, but first of all, thank you to our admissions representatives for being here. You presented not just those facts and figures, the logistics of your events, but also just your passion for the student experience in and out of the classroom at each of your amazing campuses. For everyone who attended, we hope that you enjoyed learning about six amazing schools who each have so much more to offer um, than they can even share in these six minutes. So I hope that you'll follow up, ask more questions, and maybe we piqued your curiosity to check out a school that you might not have known much about before, but could end up being the next great home for you or for your student. As we are closing out today, the logistics. When you close your window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for more uh, programming through the Bay Area Case Studies Programming. And in about a week's time, you'll find this session's recording as well as all the session recordings at strivescan.com slash BACS. That's the same website where you registered. So you can watch this again and also learn about other great schools. Thanks again, everyone for being here. Best wishes and have an awesome night. Good luck in the college search and decision process. It's a fun adventure ahead.